one, two, this doesn't work. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. One, two, there we go. Thank you so much. Yay. Cool. How's it going? Good. Going well. Yeah. Super well. Good. Good to hear. Uh, in case you just happen to walk into this room to take a break, there's a panel going on now. <laughs> My name is Mike McFarland. I am a voice actor, voice director, adaptive script writer, jack of many trades, master of none. Um, I've been acting in some capacity or another for, well, I guess, like my whole life, if you can't, like, you know, trying to get out of traffic tickets and whatever else, but, um, <laughs> professionally, maybe like 22, 25 years, something like that, since I was a wee one, did one. Um, things of note, uh, bad guy. Yes. <laughs> Master of yeah. the Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Um, Sean Kirstein yeah. from Attack on Titan. Uh, Habit from Full Metal Alchemist, yes. Buggy from One Piece. Um, if you play video, if you play the video games, um, I am uh, Charlie Nash in Street Fighter V, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I'm uh, Paul Phoenix in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and I'm in Borderlands 2 and a whole bunch of other stuff too. Um, but me listing all the stuff I've done sounds very egocentric, so I'd rather just answer questions of what you guys have. It looks like they have a microphone set up, but um, it also looks like there's a reasonable number of you. So if we just do the hand raising thing, I'll call on you, and that way you don't have to like line up and wait there forever. And um, if you want to know something cool, just uh, let me know. Raise your hand and ask a question, and if not, then we'll just play like People Aquarium, and we'll stare at each other all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right over there. So you uh, produce the One Piece stuff. Uh, do you uh, uh, do you are you the one who's like scouts uh, voice actors for all of the various characters? Uh, it depends. Like I was the line producer for One Piece for a while. They changed the setup, uh, the company structure of Funimation. So I'm not the producer anymore. I'm, I'm one of the voice directors. Uh, I cast all of the Straw Hats. I cast a lot of the bigger roles, um, but. There were a few other uh, directors that worked on it. Caitlin Glass is one of them. Um, Scott Sager and Jason Grundy. And uh, Joel McDonald does a lot of it as, uh, now as well. Uh, I still do it from time to time. Um, but when things like Titan or Full Metal or whatever else pop up, the show ends up being shifted to someone else over and over again. And, and Joel and I seem to be the ones that go back and forth on it the most often now. OK, so how is it uh, casting voices for a show like that, where there's like a new character like every few episodes? Um, it's hard. Um, that show is probably the most difficult to cast, because I would like for it to not sound super 90s and have like one person do like 50 roles. You know, I, I don't want that to happen. Um, so we are fortunate enough to, that there are lots of talent agencies in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and they get new uh, recruits all the time and we are made aware of their new voice talent. We have all of our actors uh, usually do lots of other types of acting and not just the voice acting. So we, they may meet someone in a commercial shoot, they meet someone on a film they worked on, they meet someone in a play they were in, and they recommend people. And uh, they also know that when they recommend people that their own reputation is on the line, so they can't recommend chumps to us, so that you know, it's usually good people that they end up referring to us. So we have a nice influx of continuous new talent that we've uh, been able to be, you know, fortunately made in contact with. Yeah? Yeah, same direction. Uh, a huge new ball being in Super. I love Super. Cool, man. Uh, you're, you're the voice for Roshi on Super, right? Or for what? Dragon Ball Super? Roshi? Yes. Hell yeah, I am! <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a really cool character. He has a lot of good stuff. And of course, some quality that and that. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, is your, um, what is your favorite part about playing Master Roshi? Um, that I think as far as like characters are in the Dragon Ball universe, uh, it's fun to be like the master mentor type character and also ridiculous comedic relief character at the same time. Yeah, you know, if, if Vegeta's funny, it's usually because we're making fun of him. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like he'll, he'll be scoffed or he'll say that it's something sarcastic. Roshi's just over the top and ridiculous funny or naughty funny, which is also really funny. Yeah. Um, 
And then uh, you'll have like long arcs like what he had in the first Dragon Ball series where he's like the mentor and he's like, long time ago these things happened. And so you have to still make that sort of voice and that mentality work with like, no, don't laugh at me now, I'm being serious. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a joke. So that aspect of it is a lot of fun. Thank you, it's been cool. No worries, man, thanks. Yes. Well, Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is one of my favorite anime ever. Mine too, high five. Yes. <laughs> and um, I think you were also like the director when it came to the actors, I think? Yeah, um, Brotherhood, I directed all uh, voice, I was the voice director for all of Brotherhood except for about five or six episodes that Caitlin Glass helped me out on toward the beginning of the series. That's cool. I just had like a curious question uh -huh. about two voices for one character. Okay. And like it's just curiosity. I love how both of them did it, but I was just curious why Greed went from Chris Patton to Troy Baker. Um, that decision was made to because uh, it was made a long time ago. That the decision was like six, seven years ago. But that decision was made because I wanted to make sure that there was a disconnect from the audience perspective of when you see this character pop up of what whether you know it is the same. Greed or not, um, I wanted there to be more question to it rather than just like, well, it's obviously them because it's the same voice and it's the same character, whatever else. So whenever new greed would have those harsh flashbacks or whatever, it became more of a what is going on. It became more of a mystery rather than, well, of course it's a reanimated homunculus that's been born again. I love both of them, but I'm a little biased. Me too. Biased. They're both really good. I'm a little biased towards Troy Baker, honestly. <laughs> you what? I don't know if I sports Troy Baker. Well, who's not? You know? Who isn't? Yeah. <laughs> if we could only hear his voice in something, it's you know, if, if if people would just use him more in like every video game ever. Literally. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Staring time. Yes. Uh, Jason, what are you doing today? Um. Oh. Well, go ahead. Sorry. You'll be next. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry Come. about that. No worries. Yeah. Hey, uh, you had to choose. Any voice acting you did, uh -huh. which one would be your favorite? I don't know. Um, and why? From an, and why? Um, <laughs> from an acting perspective, I don't know. Each acting challenge is fun in its own way. Um, the Roshi challenge is fun for the ways that I mentioned earlier. Like, you can't just completely be comedic sidekick all the time if the story doesn't call for it. Um, but things like, like Full Metal or like Attack on Titan. And you have so much melodrama and action going on and being able to sell that and you know serve the story and serve the animation it's the really beautiful animation to make sure that everything flows well and mixes together well and it doesn't stand out uh, in a way that it shouldn't um, I don't know I don't know if I have a favorite uh, uh, just some quick highlights of things that I really enjoy uh, Roshi just because he's so ridiculous and fun um, Jean and uh, Titan because I feel like he's the most relatable character as an audience member. Like, I would like to sign up to not die, please. <laughs> um, um, Havoc goes through a, a cool arc in Brotherhood especially. Yeah. Um, one that's not as asked about as often, uh, Tybalt and Romeo X Juliet. Woo! There you go. High <laughs> five again. Um, uh, it's a sci-fi take on the Shakespeare tale and, you know, I love it. I love it too. It's a suck off. <laughs> um, and Raina who played Juliet, she's here at this convention as well. Um, that's a really cool role. Um, and also, Mom Dad from Oran High School Host Club, Ronka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mom Dad is a really awesome character. And yes, now you. Your question. Um, is there anyone that you haven't worked before that you like to work with? Um, let's see, as far as like friends of mine and people that I've known for many, many years that I still haven't got to work with, um, I'd like to work with, uh, Steve Bloom. Yes. And I'd like to work with Kari Walker. I'm sure I can name a lot of other people as well, but I've known both of them for many, many years and they're phenomenal actors. Yes. And there just hasn't been an opportunity where I can direct them in something or we happen to be in the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Steve Bloom is a really nice guy. I yes, inter he is. I interviewed him back at Holiday Matsuri. Cool. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've known, I don't know how long I've known Steve, probably close to 20 years, at least 15 years. Good. Same with Kari. Um, 
and I've seen a lot of the work, their work, they're both really, really good, and I'd love to direct them in something or be in something with them and get to work off of them. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there's a much longer list than that. That's just a quick two people that I can think of off the top of my head. Yes, back there. So, when you voice act, how do you get yourself into the character? Um, it depends on the series and the show. Like, for instance, if I'm going to voice Master Roshi, I don't really have to do a lot of anything because I've been doing it uh, for, come this like summer or fall, like 20 years. Wow. So I just show up, like, where, where are we now in the story? I've got it. For other characters where I don't get to do it as often, um, I take cues from the way that the other characters are acting. I take cues from the music. I take cues from what the animation looks like. And then, um, personally, as far as the character's own drives and motivations and whatever else, I, take, I look at it the same way as if I'm cast in a play or I'm cast in a television show on camera or whatever. What do they want? How do they relate to other people? Where, where, where are they in this story? Because obviously everyone, individually, the story is about them. Like this is this is the Mike show, and this is the you show, and this is the you show. That's that's your perspective, and that's you're with yourself all times so unless you have multiple personalities, and then you have a lot of people with yourself at all times. <laughs> um, but it, you, know, you have to consider the driving force of what it is that you want, and what you want out of life, and what you want to achieve moment by moment, and that helps you get into character. Yes. Uh, who is your favorite uh, actor to direct? I don't know. Um, there's a lot of them that are a lot of fun, and a lot of them that are, you know, good in varying capacities. Uh, I will say that sessions with Chris Sabat are always fun. <laughs> sessions with Monica Rial are always fun, and uh, sessions with Lucy Christian are always delightful. Um, and there's tons and tons of other people that are brilliant, whatever else. But that's a quick three that I can think of for why. Yeah. <laughs> Yes? Are there any obscure roles that you would like to spend more time with? Obscure roles that I'd like to spend more time with. Um, let's see. Yeah, and Ruby? <laughs> yeah, the Bean Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. The unsung hero of Dragon Ball. <laughs> He's fun. Um, there was, because um, they get cast for them a lot, there was a and I can't remember if it was cross-dress, transgender, something of that nature. I can't remember the exact um, qualities of the character entirely, but there was a character in um, Michiko and Hashim that I played that was another uh, man-woman type character. And I can't, once again, I can't remember the specifics of how this works, but uh, that was an interesting, like, criminal character. It was fun. Um, let's see. Charlie Nash, if there was more like animated stuff for the Street Fighter universe, it'd be too fun to do more Charlie Nash. That's fun too. Probably a lot more things and stuff and things. <laughs> yeah, way back there. Uh, are there any uh, new enemies coming out that you'd be interested in voicing that you Um All of them? Uh, <laughs> all the enemies. Um I don't get to watch a lot in advance uh, because we're, now we're doing these simul dubs. I don't know if you guys are playing into a lot of that stuff. But if you um, want to see a series that are brand new, that are maybe only a, a few weeks old in Japan that already have a dub, um, Funimation.com has a streaming service that you can sign up for that. I think it's reasonable. It's like Netflixy type rates, yeah. and um, there's a bare minimum. Um, 18 new series that are being broadcast in Japan right now that have dubs right now. So you don't have to wait six months, you don't have to wait a year, you don't have to wait anything. The most you would have to wait would be like four weeks at most. And it's already cast, it's already directed, and we already have the video, and it's already online for you to see. So it's a really cool deal if you want to keep up with new stuff. But because of that, um, there's not like things like, oh, I hope I get to work on that because I. Uh, by the time that I see it, or whatever, like, oh, I hope I get to work, oh, it's auditioning right now. <laughs> like, there's nothing that I get to, like, see that far in advance 
um, that I have to wait on very long these days, except for like movies and stuff. And then they would, the answer would still be all of them, right? Yeah. So, the world we live in now. Yes? Have you ever thought about adding Roshi's voice to any other animes to make them a little more interesting? <laughs> um, there was a series, what was it called? I think it was called Sakaria or something like that, where there was an old man character and Joel McDonald was the voice director. And he's like, what do you have for an old man? I'm like, well, I have this that I do a lot. He's like, that's great. So I think <laughs> the character voice for this old man character in Sakaria is like 95% of what Master Roshi sounds like. <laughs> so if you want to see that voice stuck in another show, check that one out. <laughs> yes? Do I like uh, directing or voice acting more? Um, I love them both, and they are both rewarding in their own way. Um, for acting, uh, it's it's very enjoyable. There's a lot less pressure. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the challenges are on you specifically, and your own abilities, uh, and that's always fun to play up to. Directing is very rewarding because you're trying to guide things along and you get to try to help bring the best out of people for their performances or something that they can be proud of and for the work that they do and uh, to help guide something along so that you can show how much you uh, love and respect the original material so that you can show it to a new, uh, a new audience, an English speaking audience that wants to watch it in English and um, you know, be the best storyteller that you can and try to help retell that story over and over again for other people. Um, so I would say that acting might be more fun and directing is more rewarding. So you have to weigh out which one you like more that day. So and I can't ever pick. So <laughs> yeah, another one. For you. Are there any recent new up to new upcoming games that you'd like to voice act in? All the games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. See, the thing with me and gaming is I love the universe of gaming and I love to be in games. I don't play a lot. Like, I typically get up in the morning, I try to work out and decide not to. Um, <laughs> have breakfast, clean up, go to uh, the studio. I'm at the studio for eight hours and then I might be there longer if I'm acting in the evening. And then I have some dinner somewhere and then I go home and I write adapted scripts. And I do that until I get really sleepy and then I'll stop working and watch one of the five or six television shows like The Flash or something like that. I'll watch what I have on the, oh, I haven't watched it in six weeks, there's a lot of them stacked up, I'll just start watching that. Or, oh, there's still more Doctor Who this season that I haven't seen yet. And I'll watch that stuff and then go to sleep. So I don't, I don't game a lot, there's no room for it to be added to my life. Add it to your lunch break or something. Add it to my lunch break, you know, <laughs> that's for lunch. <laughs> I know some people who like to have quick lunch and then use the rest of that time for whatever else. I like to do nothing. <laughs> I like to eat and sit there and play with my phone and look on social media and that's my lunch. <laughs> so, um, as far as any upcoming games, man, games are so cool. There's so many neat universes and I love all the different things you can do with it and I love how cool that they look now, you know, because I'm old enough to remember when um, you could buy your own Pong and that was the only game that was available because <laughs> that was it. Um, and I had an Atari 2600, and I had, you know, I had, I had a whole lot of consoles. I still have my Sega Genesis, so. Good on you. Um, the last console I bought was the PS3. And, you know, they came out with the PS4, and I'm like, but I like my PS3. I just use it for streaming. I don't game enough to buy a new system. So, um, I even had, like, a, I think I had an Xbox 360 and a PS3. And um, when uh, the... I think there was like a format war at the time to decide between Blu-ray and some other type of high-definition HD disc. DVD, yeah. Yeah. It's like, Blu-ray wins. Get rid of 360. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need it. <laughs> so that's how much I game as I decided on streaming and media, other media as far as what game system I have. Yeah, I mean, and games are games, so it doesn't really matter what console. Yeah. Um, I think the last ones I purchased were, let's see, I got the, the Street Fighter that I'm in. 
I got the Borderlands 2 that I was in. <laughs> I think Dead Rising was the last thing that I bought that I wasn't in. I'm like, that looks fun. It's a zombie killing game, and you just kill them with whatever. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to kill them with this chair, kill them with this water bottle, kill them with a microphone. It's great. It's everything. No point. Just kill things. You can go on missions, but why? <laughs> so that was the last one I bought, and I'm sure that that's not new. We could probably pick that up for five bucks at a used game store now. It's, it's not even close to new. Steam needs to update their prices. Then. What's up? Steam needs to update their prices because there's like a bunch of games that, like, at GameStop, you can get for like ten bucks, and there's Steam's like a twenty, thirty bucks just for digital download. That's a bad model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back there. It is on, saved on the cloud, so. <laughs> What's my take what? Your take on Dragon Ball the Abridged and your characters. Oh, the Abridged stuff? I haven't watched enough of it. I've seen little clips of it. I think those guys are very funny and very talented. But I haven't watched, like, I think I've watched, like, a collective four or five minutes in my whole life. Like, I was just like, so like, watch this. Like, oh, that's great. And I have to go back to work. Um, <laughs> but I know a lot of those guys, and I think that their work is very funny. And uh, they've ended up being in other anime and stuff from that work, so good on them. Did they end up in the uh, universe too? Yeah, I can't even remember what the Roshi take is to give you an opinion on that. Like your character on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good call, four star. Uh, okay. Yeah, Roshi's in a a uh, gay relationship with Corin. He's in a what? He's in a gay relationship with Corin too. Yeah, Roshi. Oh. And also a bestiality relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets their own thing. Yes? Um, of all the characters, like, what's your favorite... Can I record this? Okay. Sure, man. Okay. <coughs> what's my favorite? What's, what's your favorite line that you ever had to say, and do you think you can do the impression of the character as you say it? Um, I don't know. There's, like, there's funny Roshi lines, which are, like, you know, they're... They're rude and not funny. <laughs> but <they're> funny. <laughs> um, there was uh, a Dragon Ball line, like the first Dragon Ball, where Goku and Krillin were trying to find him a date so that he would teach them martial arts. Oh, yes. And Goku didn't understand Roshi's aesthetic as far as what he thought was attractive. So he's like, here you go, and Roshi's like, ah! Over and over again, oh, not her! <laughs> um, and I remember at one point, and it was like Goku had tried six or seven times with varying degrees of, no, I'm not interested in her. And uh, Roshi was creeping around the building to see what he had, uh, what Goku had brought back this time, and he said, "Oh, please don't let her be chunky." <laughs> Which is rude <laughs> and funny. <laughs> um, so that's one. Uh, I don't keep track of a lot of them, um, but that's one that sticks out because I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is what's about to happen." <laughs> yeah, over there by the door. And Dragon Ball Super. Uh huh. Krillin's a cop. He's married 18. They have their beautiful little girl. Yeah, however that works out. Krillin <laughs> Does he still live in Kamea House or does he have his own place with his wife? Man, I would hope he has his own place with his wife. Yeah. When they make those kids. <laughs> I would like to think that that's true. Because we don't could know. stay at the uh, coffee house and give him training. Sure. <laughs> train all the time. All the training. <laughs> Yeah, right there. Um, I heard you were directing the One Piece of, uh, now, recently. Um, I directed the beginning of season nine, and uh, I cast all the Straw Hats, and I directed a good couple of hundred episodes of the 